ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز واستعيذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ومن يعظم شعائر الله فانها من تقوى القلوب وقال لمسجد قسس على التقوى من اول يوم احق ان تقوم فيه فيه رجال يحبون ان يتطهروا والله يحب المطهرين صدق الله العظيم My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters, as you have seen outside, the walls of the expansion of our masjid are up and they are slowly being put up and slowly but surely inshallah, the completion of the center, the expansion will take place and it will be completed very, very soon. The question is that me and you, how much are we partaking of this, of this blessing of, of participating in the completion of this uh, expansion and how much reward do we want from it? This is something that we need to ask ourselves and we need to question ourselves. If we look at the seer of the Prophet ﷺ, we look at the history of the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba and how much they sacrificed so that institutions like this, institu institutions like Masjid al Nabawi, institutions like Masjid Quba, institutions like all the Masajid and the Madaris in the world could be formed and people could benefit from them, this is the greatest lesson that we can learn. The Sahaba are an example for us and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He addresses the Sahaba in the Quran and says, فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ, آم بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدِ اِفْتَدُوا If the people have Iman, like you had Iman, O Sahaba, then indeed they will be guided. So, today's khutbah, inshallah, will be various stories about the sacrifices that some Sahaba made, particularly Uthman which resulted in a great service to Islam. I recited a verse for you in the beginning in which Allah declares to the Prophet لمسجد قصص على التقوى من أول يوم أحق أن تقوم فيه. That masjid whose foundation is on taqwa, it's on sincerity, it's upon the fear of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It is more deserving that you, O Prophet of Allah, stand inside that masjid. And this ayah was revealed when some munafiqeen they actually built a so-called masjid, but the purpose of that masjid was to gather in that so-called masjid and make plots and plans against the small Muslim Ummah of the time. And to justify the building of that masjid, these munafiqeen asked the Prophet ﷺ, come and lead the prayer inside this masjid. Allah SWT told him, La taqun fihi abada. This is not the type of masjid that you're supposed to stand in. La masjidun usisa ala taqwa. That masjid whose foundation is on taqwa, on sincerity, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is more deserving that you stand in that. Why? Inside that masjid, there are people that love to be purified. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those people that are pure and want to be purified. So what is that masjid? Which is that masjid that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in Surah At-Tawbah? It is mentioned in a riwayah, Humayd al-Kharad, he says, 
سمعت ابا سلمى عبد الرحمن يقول I heard Abu Salma Abdul Rahman say مر في عبد الرحمن بن ابي سعيد قال عبد الرحمن بن ابي سعيد passed by me and he said فقلت له كيف سمعت اباك يذكر في المسجد الذي اسس على التقوى How did you remember your father mentioning this verse which masjid is it referring to in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that there's a masjid that has been founded on taqwa so he said Abi, that my father told me this I entered upon the Prophet while he was in the house of one of his wives I said to him, O Prophet of Allah, Ayyul Masjidayn al-Ladi Fusisa ala taqwa Which is the masjid that has been founded upon taqwa? So the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam فَأَخَذَ كَثَّ مِنَ الْحَصَبَى He took a handful of pebbles from the ground. He took a handful of pebbles from the ground فَضَرَبَ بِهِ الْأَرْضِ And he threw them back onto the ground. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam ثُمَّ قَالْ هُوَ مَسْجِدُكُمْ هَذَا مَسْجِدُ الْمَدِينَ It is this masjid of yours, this masjid of Medina. قَالْ فَقُوتُ أَشْهَدُ أَنِّي سَمِعْتُ أَبَاكَ هَكَذَا يَذْكُرُ And then the Rabi of the Hadith says, I, I swear by Allah that I heard your father mentioning this Hadith to me as he heard it from the Prophet ﷺ. So Masjid al-Nabawi is according to one riwayah, according to another riwayah, it was Masjid Quba, the masjid that the Prophet ﷺ founded while he was migrating and coming to Medina al-Munawwara. But the story of the founding of this masjid and the forming of this masjid and the expansion of this masjid is very wonderful. First of all, we know that the initial building of the masjid was very small. It was very, very simple. And it was so simple, in fact, that the roof was made of date palm trees. And when it used to rain, the rain used to leak through that roof and the ground used to become muddy. And it's even reported that the Prophet ﷺ made sajda in the mud on many occasions because of this leaking roof. And then as the Muslim Ummah grew, there was a need for expansion of the masjid. First time there was an expansion, there were houses around the masjid and the people, they, had, they said they had nowhere to go. So Uthman actually purchased property for them in different areas of Medina so that they could move and so that that masjid could expand. So this happened one time. And then Uthman he did that a second time also when the need to when the masjid needed to be expanded, he expanded it a second time the same way. People living around the area of the masjid didn't want to move, had nowhere to move to. So Uthman who brought them, bought for them property on the outskirts of Medina so that they could move there and the masjid could be expanded. So Uthman he had a great hand and he was very, very generous in the building of this masjid that we love and respect so much, even to this day. And that is the masjid that was founded on taqwa. That is the masjid that was founded on the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the masjid we really, people who go to Medina, they say that, you know, the, 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 the spirit of Medina and the peace of Medina and the tranquility of Medina, it is unmatched. And this is probably because of the sincerity of uh, the Sahaba sincerity of Uthman sincerity of all the people that made sacrifices so that masjid could come into existence. There are various other stories reported about Uthman and his generosity. According to a riwayah, it is mentioned, أصاب الناس قحط في خلافة أبو بكر في خلافة أبي بكر رضي الله تعالى and during the Khilaf of Abu Bakr تعالى, there was a Qahat, there was a drought. So people came to Abu Bakr تعالى, الأمر, Abu Bakr. The people came to Abu Bakr وقالوا, 
They said, Ya Khalifa Rasulullah, O Khalifa of the Prophet of Allah, Inna Sama'a la tumtir. The skies are not giving us rain. Wal Ard lam tumbit. And the earth is not growing anything. Waqad tawaqa an nasul halak. And people are just looking forward to dying. They're just thinking that they're going to die. Fama nasna. What we should what should we do? Waqala hum in sarifu wasbiru. Abu Bakr be Allah told them, go turn around, have sabr, fa inni Allah Allah tumsu hatta you farij Allah ankum. By this evening, I hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He will open up things for you. What happened? News spread by the evening that a huge group of camels, a caravan, had come from Syria and that belonged to Uthman of Allah ta'ala. People came out to see it and meet it. It was 1,000 camels which were full of oil and grain and raisins. And they were all taken to the door of Uthman. When he put all of these goods inside his house, the traders came to Uthman. He said to them, what do you want? They said, بِعْنَا مِنْ هَذَا الَّذِي وَصَلَ إِلَيْهِ These goods that have come to you, sell them to us. قَالَ حُبًّا وَكَرَامَةً He said, of course, you know, with all respect and with all love and with all honor, I would like to do that. كَمْ تَرْبَحُونَنِي عَلَى شِرَائِي How much profit are you going to give me upon my buying it? I bought it for such and such a price. How much profit are you going to give me? So they said, a dirham or dirhamain. We'll give you a profit of one dirham or two dirhams. Meaning we'll give you a markup and you'll make X amount of profit. He said, I've been given more than this already. I've been offered more than this already. He said, how about four dirhams? He said, no. I've been given more than this already. How about five? said, I've been given more than this. And they said, nobody, there are no other traders other than us who are at your door in Medina. And nobody can afford more than this. So who is the one who is offering you more than what we're offering? So he said, Inna Allah a'tani bi kulli dirham in asha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given for every dirham 10. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me tenfold profit. A'indakum ziyada, do you have any more than that? Can you offer more than that? Qalu la. He said, no, we cannot give you so much. So then, this is something to pay attention to. He said, fa inni ushidu allaha anni ja'altu ma." I have made everything that these camels brought, these thousand camels, I have made them a sadaqah for the poor people, for the orphans and the needy in this community. Everything he gave in charge. And this is one example of the generosity of Uthman of Yalan. Now the second story I'm going to tell you it is something that I was astonished by. Just on the outskirts of Medina, probably you know that I just came back from Hajj last week. On the outskirts of Medina, there is a building. It's a new construction. And this construction is maybe about 20 to 25 stories high. Big building on the outskirts of Medina. Now, when a construction is taking place, usually there's a billboard, a sign, which tells you the background of this construction. And on this billboard, it says, What for Uthman ibn Affan of Allah Ta'ala? It is written that this building has been made from the endowment of Uthman ibn Affan of Allah Ta'ala. So this was very astonishing that a new building, which is being constructed right now, 
1400 years after the passing away of Uthman radiallahu it says that this is the endowment of Uthman ibn Affan. So I did a bit of research on this issue. That where did this building come from? What is the background of this building? And I found out a story which is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. That is, there was a well in the time of, and you've probably heard this story before, and you've probably heard the generosity of Uthman at that time, but the consequences of that are what I'm about to tell you, and that's the fascinating thing. In the time of the Prophet there was a person who owned a well, and according to other rewites, it was a spring of water, not a well. And this well was called Ruma. Now this well, it was owned by a Jewish person, and he used to sell this water that was coming from this well for a very steep amount of money to the Muslims. And the Muslims were having a hard time buying this water. They were, having, they were finding it very difficult. So the Prophet ﷺ, he announced one day that who will buy this well and make it work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I promise him a house in Jannah. So Uthman ta'ala stood up and said, I'm going to buy it. And there were differing rewires about how much he offered the Jew, but it was at that time, a very substantial amount, this Jewish person was not willing to sell. So he said, I'll tell you what, tell, sell me half of the ownership of this wealth. <clears throat> so the Jew agreed. Uthman Allah, who gave him this uh, money and he became half an owner of that wealth. And how do you basically decide? How do you split the ownership of wealth, which is half-half, Uthman ta'ala who he had people coming on his day to use the well and people basically were taking the water for free and on his day, on the next day, the Jewish person used to sell the water. So after a while what happened, people started only coming on the day of Uthman because they're getting the water free and now the Jew is basically uh, empty-handed so he says to Uthman ta'ala, why don't you just buy the rest of the world from me so that you retain 100% ownership. So Uthman who gave him another amount of money, again quite a substantial amount, and he took full ownership of that well. Now people utilized that well and benefited from that well for many, many years. And it's mentioned that this well became in a state of disrepair for many, many years. And it was again reinvigorated and refurbished during the time of King uh, Abdul Aziz, a Saudi, which was just a few decades ago. And when it was reinvigorated, the water that came from that well, it was used to water date palm trees which were planted around the well. And the dates that were taken from that, from those date palms, were actually sold and half of the money was put into an endowment fund and half of the money was distributed amongst the poor and the needy. And as a result of this endowment and this investment, so much money came from that investment that now that money is, is flourishing and now buildings are being made which are an endowment because of the wealth of Uthman and like I mentioned, this huge new uh, building, 25 stories high, is being built right now and the money that is going to be generated to it is going to be put back into this endowment fund. So this is the story of that building that I saw, which is mentioned, well, Uthman ibn Affan, this is the history behind it. The moral of the story is what? The moral of the story is that when we are generous, when we are sincere, we are going to leave this world, we are going to go into our graves, we don't know what is going to happen because of our generosity. We don't know what's going to happen because of our sincerity, but maybe hundreds of years later, people are going to be benefiting from the small amount of donation that we made. Now do you think that Uthman, 
he is not benefiting from the reward of him making that initial sacrifice and buying that wealth for the Muslims, he is still benefiting. The book of deeds is still open for him. So now we see in our community, we have this expansion that is taking place and we've had fundraisers before, we've had people asking you for donations before and we will continue to ask you for donations. And today we're going to inshallah have a fundraiser. Keep in mind my dear brothers and sisters that the walls that you see, it is not a multi-purpose hall that is being built. It is not just classrooms that are being built. It is not just walls that are being put up. In fact, what is happening, history is being made over here. These walls are going to be standing here, inshallah, for hundreds of years. The question is, and of course, the building is going to proceed, is going to continue, is going to carry on. The question that I should ask myself, and you should ask yourself, is that what am I doing to contribute towards this very, very worthy cause? So that, just like Rahman Allah who is benefiting in his grave, even to this day, I can benefit. I can have some form of Sadaqa Jariya that I can retain my books open. I can keep my books of deeds open even after I pass away. So that is the that is the question that we need to be asking ourselves. And it's a very easy thing to do. It's a very easy thing for us to build this building and complete it. Approximately 1,500 or so people come to Juma. Very, I'll give you the numbers, it's very simple. If each and every one of these 1,500 people commit to $500, whether today or over a span of time, that's three quarters of a million dollars, right there. Just $500. It doesn't break the bank. It is not very difficult to achieve, but inshallah, because of this generosity of yours, the building inshallah will be completed and we will have in a very short amount of time a multi-purpose hall and classrooms that we can benefit from and our children can benefit from, our grandchildren, our great-great-grandchildren can inshallah continue to benefit from and even after we pass away we will be getting the reward for it. One of the main things that this multi-purpose hall is going to be used for is for the crowd of Juma. We see what happens in Juma, all the way to the door, the crowd is gathered. All the way to the door, there are subs. And just imagine, when we donate, inshallah, we will continue to get the reward for every single Musalli who is praying Juma. And even in Taraweeh, we do, we're going to need it. Salat Taraweeh, the Masjid Hall gets packed. We're going to need that multi-purpose hall for the overflow of this hall and all the Quran that is recited all the good deeds that are done in the multi-purpose hall because of your generosity, you will continue to get the reward for that. So it's a small request for everybody. Today I want everybody to donate inshallah just $500. Just $500. But nobody should leave without donating $500. That's the minimum. If you want to do more, that's up to you. But the very minimum that each and every one of us should take it upon ourselves should be $500 so that this building can be completed, it can be completed on time, and we can inshallah start utilizing it. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the to understand and practice what has been said in her. Just a few quick announcements inshallah. There's inshallah Janaza prayer after the first remark for Sister Naseem Yusuf, who is the mother of Brother Mir Matan. And again, each and every time somebody passes away, we need to take that as a lesson from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that one day, I'm going to be also lying in a coffin and my janazah will be prayed. What am I doing to prepare for that? So this is something that inshallah is going to be taking place after the fundraising. So please do participate in this salat and janazah. Tonight, Dr. Sirajuddin will be presenting 545 information about preventative medicine with a Q&A session. It's going to take place after salat and Isha. And GQ show is shaping up the Ummah this Saturday, November 2nd at 7 p.m. Uh, and the, uh, this is, the, they're going to have uh, a, a women's breakfast club and that's going to take place at 10 a.m. There's one program at 7 p.m. 
and one uh, women's program at 10 a.m. inshallah. The big breakfast club is going to start again and it's uh, starting at 7.15 a.m. Uh, basketball is going to take place inshallah uh, at 7.15 a.m. on Saturday after Salat and Fajr inshallah. Uh, and also the Islamic School of Irving Advisory Board is inviting you and your family to the annual fundraising dinner for the Islamic School of Irving. It's going to take place November 17th at 5 p.m. And there are door prizes of iPads and tablets, etc. And it's going to take place at Sheraton DFW Airport Hotel. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us topic to understand and practice for us being said and heard. A full of we had that was a little lovely. What a fun one is that in the screen. First of all, in the whole world of Allah. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد بعدد من صلى وصام، اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد بعدد من قعد وقام، وصل على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين، وعلى الملائكة المقربين، وعلى عباد الله الصالحين، برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين، اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين، اللهم اذل الشرك والمشركين، اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين، اللهم انصر من من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم. واخذل من قضل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا معهم اللهم انصرنا ولا تنصر علينا اللهم انكلنا ولا تنكر علينا اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا اللهم آتنا ولا تحرمنا اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة على الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفاء آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباطل يعرفكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي الذي يذكركم فادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى اعلى واولى واكثر والله يعلم ما تصنعون اقيموا الصلاه. <تصفيق>